Um, so yeah, our next speaker tonight, a good personal friend of mine, a mentor, a great man in the community, played here at The Ohio State University four years, played wide receiver, then for the Indianapolis Colts, am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, in the league for four years, and now runs an excellent, excellent foundation called the Driven Foundation. Um, they do a lot of good work in the city of Columbus with helping the homeless, to helping um, the youth in the city, delivering over 500,000 pounds of free food to more than 4,800 4, Central Ohio families since 2008, man. That's just incredible, incredible work. Um, and this is actually the first time I've seen him without a suit on. My man is always clean. But um, just please give a warm welcome to Mr. Roy Hall. t-shirts because they're too small for me, but, you know. O-H! I-O! O-H! I-O! All right, all right. Um, where's he at? He's sitting there. Okay, congratulations again, big guy. Um, you are an inspiration to many people, obviously, on this campus, <clears throat> but when I talk to people all the time, like, when we do what we do, we don't necessarily know, like we know our immediate circle of friends and people that look up to us and things like that, but there are literally little kids in the second, third, and fourth grade that follow all of you all. They don't just follow the football team. These are kids that I work with. And so when you guys keep fighting, right, don't hold back is something that just stood out in my mind. When you guys keep fighting and practice and you never give up and you keep pushing forward and you do all those things, like those are moments that you're literally impacting the destinies of young people around this entire state and really from your hometown or wherever you're from. Like they're looking to you to be that story. And so like when you quit and when you give up and you don't keep going or you outthink yourself or you don't give maximum effort and things that you guys do, like when that happens, you literally alter the course of life for people that are in the second, third, and fourth grade. Because you guys know like if you hold back in that one moment and you lose, and you give up or you transfer or you quit or you don't make the squad or whatever it may be, you won't have a story to tell. They won't have anybody to look up to. So it's like when you're in practice and you get tired or you're walking around campus and you don't feel like being here or you feel like you're out of place or you want to go back home or you want to just give it all up or just, get, just give in to whatever the pressure or stress is that's going on in your life, like when that happens, it's not just your life that's going to get changed and your immediate circle or family of, and friends that'll get changed. It's literally young people in the entire state of Ohio and wherever you're from that are watching and following you that they're gonna be like, you know what, they couldn't make it. They didn't make it, so I can't do it. Like if it was too hard for them, and they're the best I've ever seen, if it was too hard for them, then I'm not gonna be able to do it either. So you gotta understand that this thing, purpose through sport, like this is not about us. Nothing that you do is about you. From here on out, it's not about you. Like, he wasn't an Olympic champion until he made it about Christ. Like, that's true. Like, he wouldn't have won, and he wouldn't have come back down for, for nothing if it wasn't about him. If he doesn't have that verse tattooed on his, his arm, his mind, his, just everything about him, tattooed in the spirit, that is. If it's not on him, he's not coming back, and he's not going to win, because he's going to be doing it on his own strength. And you never win when you can do that, ever. So, um... We thank you for not giving up. We thank you for uh, being so gracious and to share your story. Um, life changes not only for you, but everybody around you, right? Like, you, for the first time in a long time, there's somebody on this campus bigger than the football team, right? <laughs> like, that hasn't happened in a very long time. And because of that, and what you do with that platform, for him, is going to determine whether or not you stay there or not. And that goes for everybody. That goes for everyone in this room. Um, so that's not what I want to talk about, but I guess he wanted me to say it. But anyway, here's my suit, just in case you want to see me in the suit. Oh, that too. Um, again, I'm thankful to be here. You guys allow me to come here every year and, and uh, speak to you guys. I'm on the tail end of being a millennial, um, 32, so I'm like right there, which is really, really good, because um, if not, I think I would be like in the baby boomers or something. Or, I don't know, whoever has those types of classes to let me know. But I fall on the good side of, of things, and I'm excited to be here. Um, there's a few things I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, the first being um, what's on the screen, I guess, purpose through sports. Uh, do we have those few verses to put up? Uh, I want to take you guys through a couple things. Um, 
in Acts chapter 1, I got the whole thing up here so you guys can see it. And I might read it. I might give you the paraphrase. But what I want to talk to you guys about um, is your purpose. Because I think that's the biggest thing that we all have str we struggle with. Like, what's my purpose? Like, what is my purpose here in this world? What is my purpose at Ohio State? What is my purpose being a, a daughter or son? What is my purpose being a brother? Like, what is my purpose? Like, I know I'm good in athletics. I know I'm good in academics. But what is my purpose? And the majority of America, society, and anybody that you talk to struggle with what is my purpose. And so I'm just going to give you a couple examples, um, one of which Jesus gives us our purpose, and then once with uh, our Heavenly Father and God himself gives us our purpose. But uh, I'm going to start here in Acts 1, 6 through 11. Uh, it says, so when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? So this is after Jesus is resurrected. Um, he's about to ascend back to heaven. He's leaving his people. He's leaving his disciples. And this is his last meeting, just like we are right now. This is like the last meeting before the evening is out. And he's going to give them some instructions. So they ask, like, are you about to, like, restore the kingdom? Like, you're back now. We're happy. Like, you're back from the dead. Everything is good. So he said to them, it is not for you to come uh, to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now watch this. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, Behold, two men stood by them in white robes, there's your angels, right? And said to them, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? Now this part, this, is, this Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come the same way as you saw him go. But this question, why do you stand looking into heaven? So what happens with your relationship with Christ, and what happened here, is he's going to give you some instructions. <laughs> Now, one thing that you know for certain, most of the time or all the time, I just take it as any time that God's talking to somebody in the Bible, he's talking to me as well. So there's nothing in the word that you can say that's not for me. Because it may not be for you at that very moment, but it may be for you in six months. It may be for you in six years. It may be for you when you're in Rio and you don't even remember the song, but you saw it and you're like, that's the one that's going to get me over. Like everything in the Bible is written for you. Like the teaching of it, everything about it is for you. So you have to understand this. There's no part where I go to my favorite verse. That's good, but everything else is for you as well. Like the Bible is your playbook. And you can't just know one play or one move or one situation to deal with. Like you have to know the entire playbook in and out. It's always easy to find people who don't study their playbook. Because when they call a play and one person's out of position, most of the time when the quarterback throws that interception, it's not his fault. It's usually the receiver's fault or the offensive lineman's fault but not doing what they were supposed to do because they didn't study that particular play. When I was in Indianapolis, Peyton Manning didn't play around. Not only did he want you to know the real playbook, he wanted you to know the fake playbook that was in his mind. That's why his head's so big. He literally has things in his mind that aren't on the playbook, but he expects you to know them. Like, that's just who he is and how he operates. But we got some instructions here. And he gave us our purpose. Let's go back up here. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all in Judea and Samaria. Like, you'll be my witnesses in Columbus. You'll be my witnesses in Ohio. You'll be my witnesses all around the country. If you get blessed enough and fortunate enough to go to Rio or wherever, you'll be my witnesses there as well. Like, you got some instructions. Well, what's a witness? What do I do? Well, what did you see? What did you hear? What did you feel like? What did Jesus make you feel like? What did he do for you? What did you see? How did you feel? How did he make you feel? How did your life change? Like being a, a witness. Like if somebody got robbed out here and we saw it happen, like what, what did you see? Here's the good thing about being a witness. It's always a different perspective. See, everybody in here would be seeing it differently, but we saw the same thing. We saw the man get robbed out here, but coming from our angle, our pers perspective of where we were, we might have heard something different. We might have saw something different. The light might have flickered outside, and because there was evidence of somebody outside, then that might have been a getaway car. Like, all of us are going to see something to solve this crime. All of us see something in him that bring us closer to him or that will bring other people closer to him. But see, here's the problem. This is where we falter. 
This is where we falter. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, see, he gave us instructions. He gave us our purpose. You're supposed to take the relationship that you have with him and or be watching the relationship that other people have with him and use it to bring other people closer to him to build this kingdom. Like, that's our purpose. But this is what we do. We start gazing. We start gazing. We start looking. We hesitate. We procrastinate. Like, we're spectators. We become spectators. It's amazing how many of us in this room love athletics. We're on the field competing. We're giving it everything that we have on every play, every down, whatever it is. Like, in practice, we give everything we have. But when it comes to Jesus, we're spectators. We're literally in the bleachers just watching. We're just watching. We're spectators. And occasionally, occasionally, we'll put up a nice little Facebook or Instagram post with a nice little scripture on it. But the rest of our lives, we're just spectators. We're not committed. We say we're committed, but we're not committed. We say we want the good life, but we don't really want it. This life with Christ, it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It's like being down for nothing all the time. Because we got to keep coming back and keep coming back and keep proving him wrong and keep proving him right and keep witnessing for him and keep showing people who he really is. Like we got to keep doing it. It never stops. It doesn't stop when you're sleeping. It doesn't stop when you're awake. It doesn't stop in practice. It doesn't stop in the games or the match. It, doesn't, it never ends. There is no finish line. There is no arriving. Like you're always trying to get further and further with him. It never stops. We're gazing. We're gazing. He gave us instruction. We're still looking on him to do it. We wait for him to do it. See, <clears throat> without God, man can't. Without God, we can't. Without God, we can't. But without man, without us, God won't. He won't do it. <clears throat> Go point out some places other than the beginning of the Old Testament where God's doing things just on his own. The majority of everything that's happening in the Bible is miracle-wise of people getting saved or people, whatever, is going through people. So much so that he had to send a man and his son Jesus to die for us. He didn't come down and do it himself. Without God, we can't. Without us, he won't. So we can't be spectators. We cannot expect to get the type of results that we see in the Bible, the type of results that people have been telling us about since we were little kids, about Jesus and about Christ and about heaven and all these great things that we want to be true. We cannot get those things done unless we do our part as witnesses. Everybody on the outside or anybody in this room that's not a believer, they're looking to us as believers to have results. Where are our results? A gold medal is not a result. It's a result of a great wrestling match. But now what? I asked him, what, not, what are you going to do now? Well, I got to you know, take some break. Then I'm going to keep training. Yeah, but when we're working for Jesus, there is no break. And there is no gold medal. You could get up here and preach a sermon. as 18 people could get their life from Jesus Christ. And it doesn't stop there. You got to do it again next week and the next day. Just because you have a good moment. Oh, you know what? I talked about Jesus. I had a, I had a good week. That's, that's awesome. That's great. Congratulations. Move to the head of the class. Now what? It never ends. We get caught up gazing. And then, this is where the speakers that come here last week, JT was here, I believe. I'm here at Kyle here. But watch this. <clears throat> Two men stood by them in white robes. Then God will send people to you to remind you of what you're supposed to be doing. He'll send people to you to remind you of what you're supposed to be doing. Like when people come up here, it's just not for show. Like it's not for show. This is real life. Like how you guys take your respective sports and practice, like that's how I take this. But I used to be in your seats. I also used to be somebody that said Jesus wasn't real. Like that was me. And then I lost all my hair and I was like, okay, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. you, might, you. I hear you. But I used to be that guy, man. <clears throat> I don't even think I ever came to an athlete's and national meeting. Probably because Tom had me doing something all over the city by the time I gave my life to Christ. He had me somewhere else, but it just wasn't that much of a priority all the time. All the time. You go to that next week for me. <clears throat> Give you another example from your Heavenly Father. <clears throat> now, everybody knows the story of Adam and Eve. 
All right. Eve ate from the tree, forbidden fruit. God told her not to. Adam, he told Adam not to. Eve did it. Eve gave it to Adam. She ate. God came looking for him. He blamed it on Eve. All right. So he's looking for him. Excuse me. Then it says uh, Genesis 1, uh, 26 through 28. If you're taking notes, you should be at least writing these verses down. All right. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image, which is awesome. We look like God. We walk like God. We talk like him. That's absolutely awesome. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of, of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God, he created him. Now, that's the second or third time you've been heard that we're just like him, right? It says he created a male and female. He created them. And God blessed them. <clears throat> so we're already blessed from the beginning. Have everything we want. We're blessed. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill in the earth and subdue it and have dominion or dominate over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens. And there's the instructions two times in a row. So we have to dominate in everything that we do. Now, you don't think that God loves sports? Whenever you get like Chicago Bears, Detroit Lions, <laughs> Baltimore Ravens, Miami Dolphins, like they're all animals. Adam named all those animals. So the NFL doesn't even exist if he doesn't name all those animals. I just want to let you know how much he loves sports, all right? <laughs> Back to the message. <clears throat> so God created him in his own image. So we look like him, we act like him, we walk like him, et cetera, et cetera. We, so he, get, he blessed us. We had everything that we needed back then. Like we had everything. Whatever it is that you desire to have as a student athlete, houses, cars, the ability to speak in front of people, the ability to talk about Jesus. Like, we had all that. We dominated in our area. The Garden of Eden was not the entire earth. If it was the entire earth, then he wouldn't have had anybody where to send us to subdue, right? We had our area where we were dominant. Like, you dominate right here in Columbus, Ohio. Like, you dominate on campus. But outside of this, we need to go out and be the light. That's what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to be the light in darkness to dominate everything. Any challenge, any adversity, any difficulty that you may face, you are supposed to be running through it. Like we don't quit. We don't tap out. We don't give in to peer pressure. Like we squeeze peer pressure. We choke it out. Like Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor got choked out two, two matches ago. We do that to our opposition. That's what we do. When anybody threatens our relationship with Christ, like that's what we're supposed to be doing. But then... Something happened. He gave us everything we wanted. He gave us the instructions. And then all of a sudden, we decided to do what we wanted to do. See, what happens when you're a spectator, like I said earlier, when you're a spectator and you're watching, <clears throat> see, in your mind, you think because you have a private relationship with Christ, you're protecting it. That's a lie. <clears throat> Keeping your relationship with Christ and God private does not protect that relationship with Christ or the Lord. That's the first mistake. It's like having a Snapchat relationship with Jesus, right? It's gone. Here one day, gone the next. Like, we got Snapchat, we got Snap relationships with Christ. That picture that we took, it's not going to be there in 24 hours. So if you didn't take your own selfie, you're just going to have to tell people about it. Watch this, being witnesses. Like, I was there and I touched the gold medal. I know you didn't love me. Yes, I did. Like, I know Jesus. He touched my heart. No, he didn't. No, yes, he did. I'm telling you, you may not have been there, but it happened. Watch this. Can you go to the next verse? I got six minutes, which is awesome. <laughs> so <clears throat> he gave us instructions. Jesus gave us instructions to be witnesses, to tell people about them, to build a kingdom up. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's our purpose. That's why we're athletes. So that we have a platform to give. See, it's, it's perfect. your purpose is through your platform. God gives you a platform. Right now, it says a student athlete. Six years from now, none of you guys will be here unless you're you know, getting your doctorate or you're some type of doctor or you know, whatever, microphysicist, chemist, whatever. All right, if you need to go to school for more than five years, right? Or unless you just messed up and you have to leave and come back, whatever your situation is. But six years from now, you should be here, right? So right now, you have a specific platform as a student athlete. Your platform will change. Like your platform right now is your image. Your image is on the outside. Your identity is on the inside. Your identity should be in Christ. Your image right now is on the outside, how you look and all that stuff. Anything in between your image and your identity, you try and make up with your reputation. 
right? So that's how we end up becoming people that we're not. So you got your image on the outside, your identity on the inside. Most of us know who we are in Christ, but our image is jacked up on the outside because we're trying to show people who we can be and who they want us to be. And so we're trying to make up the difference in reputation. So we try and protect our reputation. Like the majority of us, if we go into different cities or different places around our hometowns and whatnot, different people know us differently. Like we put on these masks and become something else because we want our rep to be nice. When our entire mission and purpose is to be functioning outside of our identity in Christ. But we don't do that. We don't do that. We're spectators, right? <clears throat> Watch this. So after Adam and Eve got caught up, <clears throat> God goes looking for them. It says, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So, yep, God was walking around. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. You really just gonna hide from God behind the tree. Like, you know not to do that and hide and seek when you're little, but I mean, whatever. Their minds was clouded. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? Which I found was interesting that God knew where he was, but when you hide, like, like we hide from God, like he doesn't hide from us, right? That's like when you go home after you drink a lot and you go home like, all right, made it home safe. Like, and you try to go to sleep without praying, and normally you do. Like, oh, I'm not going to pray tonight just because, you know, I, I disrespected you. I'm going to just hide from you tonight. And hopefully in the morning when I wake up, you can forgive me, right? That's how it works. And then verse 10 says, and he said, so Adam says, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, so God said, who told you that you were naked? Now, I had this up here because I shared it. I shared it with the football team a few weeks ago. And this wasn't the meat of the message on purpose, but this is the reason why we don't walk in our purpose. This is the reason why we don't dominate. This is the reason why we don't witness. This is the reason why Jesus is nothing more than some scriptures that we keep in our back pocket or highlight in our Bibles and occasionally put in our uh, IG bio, whatever it may be, because of this. <clears throat> Now let me just lay this out for you. Back this time, like a long time ago, like before they had dates, like before there were numbers and dates, like this was like year, like day one or whatever, it might be day seven or eight, I don't know. Um, there was no Google, there was no dictionary, there was no thesaurus. Who told you that you were naked? The word naked didn't even exist until that moment. Not only that, if you were naked, how would you know how to feel? Who told you that you were naked? Now we know uh, Satan and the enemy and the serpent talked her into it. Like whose voice is that strong that not only have you added a word to the vocabulary of this dang old universe, but you feel something that you've never felt before. Who told you that? Who told you that it was enough just to tweet a Bible verse every morning, that's being a Christian? Like, who told you being a student athlete at The Ohio State University made you better than the other students here? Like, who told you that? Like, who told you that Jesus wasn't real? Who told you that? Who told you if you just prayed before every meal that everything would be okay? Who told you that? Who's telling you that you can't make it? Who's telling you that you won't amount to anything? Who's telling you because you're not starting right now or you're not the go-to person on your team that it's not going to get better than that? Who told you that just because your aunt died of breast cancer and it runs in your family that it's going to have to happen to you? Like, who told you that? Who told you that it was okay to get drunk and Uber at home because it's safe? Like, who told you that? Who told you that you don't have to open up about your relationship with Christ because it's a personal thing? 
Who told you that it's okay to argue about Donald Trump and Hillary on Facebook and get all the non-believers to see that we do the same thing that everybody else does? We argue. We don't have any solutions. Like, who told you that it was okay to do that? Who told you that it was okay to follow Kim Kardashian, Kanye Drake, watch the MTV Music Awards, follow all these people on Twitter, IG, and all that good stuff, but when you get people like Tom Rody or Athletes in Action or whatever to act, well, Tom didn't have a Twitter account, but Athletes in Action, when they get all their social media, nobody follows them and nobody, why? Who told you it was okay because they're not, they're not cool enough for me to put my follow on them, but it's okay for me to follow Kim Kardashian and Kanye and Drake. Like, who told you? That's why we don't witness. That's why we don't know our purpose. Because we're listening to a voice and voices and things, radio, music, other people, family members, students, professors. We're listening to everybody, everybody's voice is louder, so much so that we are creating things in our lives that are negative that's not even supposed to exist. So of course you're not gonna walk in purpose. Of course you think because you're a swimmer or a diver or a rower or a wrestler or a football player or a basketball player or a track athlete, because you're there you think like you sweet, you think you're good. Like you think just because occasionally when you do an interview you say, oh, God did it for me, you're good. Like we don't have time to waste. I'm close with this. I know you guys. Are... I'm gonna close with this. We don't have time. Like my brother that played here at the Ohio State University, Will Smith, got murdered in New Orleans probably about three months ago. Eighty million dollar contract, wife, three kids, budding TV career, businesses, all the cars and houses and whatever else you want. Probably been to Rio 17 times and back. All American here. Pro Bowl player, first round draft pick, number 15. Overall, right? Wills and he got murdered. But Will didn't wake up that morning thinking that that was gonna happen. He woke up thinking he had time to live his life. And we don't have time. We don't have time. Like you don't have the time that you think, like you don't have time to waste. Like what you got to lose? You gotta give it your all in everything that you do every single day. It's not a game. Like we got an opportunity to completely dominate on this earth, man. And not for us, it's all about him. So if you give everything that you have, every single opportunity that you have, that you can go back and pick your little brain because you major in whatever, everybody, what are you majoring in? People always ask you, like, 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 your resume is contingent upon what you major in. Like, they're giving you value based on your major. So if you're so smart, go figure out how to use your platform right now to win people over to Jesus. Like, that's what it's about. But if you keep listening to these outside sources that are telling you you're doing enough, you're not doing enough, it's never enough. It's never enough. You guys want to be, you guys want real greatness? Start getting out in the community with athletes in action and winning, winning young people over to Christ. Like that's a gold medal. Forget that gold medal that's going around. He gonna win 17 more, that one ain't gonna be worth nothing. He gonna break Michael Phelps record, it don't matter. <laughs> like that doesn't matter. You wanna win some real gold medals? Pack this room out. Why is it the same attendance that it was last year? Like who's supposed to be witnessing, them? No, this is your house. If the shoe is not packed, it's because we lose it. People don't show up when you lose. People don't fight to get in the room when you're losing. This room is not packed to capacity and people sitting on the floor because we're behind right now. So you got to step up. You got to tell your teammates. How you going to go out to drink with them, but you don't want to bring them here? If you're at least going to go drink with them, at least bring them here and say, man, we all need prayer or something. Get them here. <laughs> Purpose through sports, man. It's all about him. You gotta witness and you gotta dominate and you gotta keep going and you gotta stop listening and creating ridiculous things. And you gotta stop feeling shameful and feeling guilty and, and feeling bad. Like it's not about you, it never will be. You gotta understand why we're here, and I just told you. You got it from the Father and you got it from Jesus. That's all you need. Take what you have and use it to bring people to him. That's it. That way, no matter what you're doing, whether you're here or you're not,
whether you grow up to uh, maybe it's called the 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 what the Smith Success Center. By the time you make enough money to change the name of this building or whatever it may be, whatever your platform is, your purpose doesn't have to change. It doesn't have to change, and it shouldn't change. Um, you guys will get some questions or something that to to answer. Um, uh, we put some, together a couple questions just to get you guys talking about this. Um, but these three verses, man, um, and these questions here, you guys, I know I'm going to pass this mic over, uh, but you guys know what to do. I don't know, man. All right. God bless you guys.